Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see you all made it, even though it got quite cold out. But I'd like to talk a little bit about part of my career as a structural engineer. I graduated from Marquette University with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, and I decided to work in Chicago. So when I came back to Chicago, well, the, my first job was in the stockyards with Swifton Company, designing some of their buildings. But uh, one good thing about the location, it was right near uh, Illinois Institute of Technology. So I ended up going there evenings uh, for about three years, taking some graduate courses in structural engineering, which then helped me pass the professional engineer's examination and the structural engineer's examination, which uh, is quite important if you're a structural engineer. <laughs> so. Uh, so from, uh, but then after working on the south side, I figured, well, it's, might as well go downtown and uh, save a half hour traveling each way. So I went with a uh, larger engineering firm, uh, which was uh, actually a national firm. They uh, had uh, offices in uh, New York City and the East Coast and in Canada and on the West Coast. And, uh, and when I joined them, they just uh, finished the Oklahoma Turnpike. And then they just were almost finished with the New York Thruway. And when I joined them, uh, uh, I, they put me on uh, the, uh, the West Expressway going around Milwaukee. And from there, uh, it was uh, uh, on the New Jersey Turnpike, which required uh, widening at that time. And, and then we uh, end, ended up with a job uh, finishing up the Massachusetts Turnpike. And, and they had a special arrangement on that project, like they selected a contractor from Boston that they were familiar with, and it was a, like a cost plus contract for them because they wanted the work to be done as quickly as possible. And uh, our part of the job was to finish up all the engineering. And uh, then my part of the job was to make sure that uh, what went to the contractor, all the drawings were checked, and it was complete, and there would be no field problems. So every, almost every day or every other day, I would uh, say, uh, say uh, express mail the drawings and the specifications to this contractor, and it, and it did help uh, speed up the job quite a bit. But during that time, there was a, a change in our office. Like the chief structural engineer of our department, he had some health problems, and. He decided to retire early, and his assistant took over as the chief engineer. Now he was only about four years older than I was, I was about 35 at the time, and uh, he was a good engineer, but uh, he had uh, some problems against the Catholic Church. He, when he came by, he would always come by and say an insulting remark about the Catholic Church or the Pope or the Cardinal. just out of nowhere, I, and, I, and I never questioned him, I never uh, even uh, said anything to him, uh, I just pretend I didn't even hear it. And, uh, but then one day he said something which affected me, and it affected me so that it, I was sitting down and it caused a pain in my chest, and I figured, well, maybe if I stand up, it might go away. But when I stood up, I collapsed on the floor, and they called in the ambulance and they said, uh, what hospital do you want to go to? And at that time I didn't even have a doctor. And the only doctor I knew was one fellow I went to high school with and he graduated from medical school and he was a doctor now at St. Joseph Hospital at Lincoln Park. So I told him, St. Joseph Hospital. So they kept me there for five days, giving me all kinds of examinations, tests, and at the end of the five days he says, there's nothing wrong with you. And, uh, Maybe your nerves are too sensitive, but at that moment I decided I'm getting out of this place where I'm working. I don't want to work with that fellow anymore. And uh, I decided at that time I, I might need some divine intervention or some additional help. So I was working downtown. I was only maybe about three blocks away from St. Peter's Church. So I decided to go to church there every noontime. And, and, uh, just keep keep praying until something happened, and uh, 
after about uh, two months, I ended up leaving church and uh, running into an engineer that I used to work with. And he ended up leaving this company that I was with for almost the same reason, only he wasn't a Catholic, it wasn't anything due to religion, he just couldn't work with this fellow. So he decided to leave uh, that, that company and he ended up joining the Quaker Oats Company. And after about two and a half years, he became the manager of all the uh, Quakers facilities. So I asked him uh, if they have any job openings. And he says, yes, they do. He says, they're looking for a project manager. I says, well, that's the kind of work I'm interested in. And he says, well, just come, come. we'll make appointments for next week and, uh, and uh, come in and uh, fill out the paperwork and, and um, interview these people I'm going to set you up with. So I did that, and uh, the following week I had interviews with the, the vice president of engineering and the chief and uh, other top engineers. And at the end of the day, they says, "Well, you got the job," and it ended up to be um, <coughs> actually like a turning point because uh, when I was working there, then uh, as the project manager, and I ended up well at the first job they assigned me was a, a brand new what did ready to eat uh, cereal plant in Danville, Illinois. And it was uh, set up for 15 production lines and it uh, worked out quite well and uh, well I guess uh, and then I after that it was you know one project after another. I mean it was done from the cereal plants to the, uh, what would be, so the pet food plants to the frozen food plants and ended up on a, even a chemical plant. That was one of the last major projects I was on, but towards the end of this project, uh, there came a change uh, in the production of uh, this chemical. We were making a chemical called furfural, which was made out of organic wastes, like they were the waste from sugar cane, I guess like the gas and corn cobs and, and the rice hulls. And they made what they used this chemical for was to make make some uh, high grade plastics, and uh, also they use it in the foundry. But the petrochemical uh, industry came up with a, a chemical which was somewhat similar, only it was much lower in price. So uh, Quaker at the time decided to sell the entire chemical division. See, so, and after they sold the chemical division, then they sold the petrol division, and then. Pretty soon, Pepsi-Cola offered them uh, money for the rest of the company. And uh, so that was sort of the end of my job there at uh, Quaker. But actually, while I was at Quaker, they actually also asked me to be quite uh, you know, uh, involved with the professional engineering organizations. Like uh, I was a member of the American Society of Civil Engineers and also the Structural Engineers Association of Illinois. And when uh, I, so I was willing, because uh, at the American Society of Civil Engineers, they used to have like a Friday noon luncheon program. And after the lunch, they would have a, a speaker, which would last maybe 20 minutes, and it was a topic of interest to all the engineers. And uh, I, I came to, the, to this program quite often, and they asked me to be the chairman for the next year of, this, of the program committee. So I said, okay. And I ended up getting uh, 12 other engineers to help me because there's, you know, uh, 40, there was at least 50 programs, you know, for the year. And it turned out, uh, there was, <coughs> excuse me, one of the best years they ever had because we had some turnouts that filled up the, the dining room, about 75, 80 people. And uh, most of the time they had at least 35, 40 people. But uh, it, it was a good combination, you know, of different people and uh, a good subjects that they had. And so at the end of the year, they says, well, how about uh, running for treasurer next year? I says, okay. And then, so then the next couple of years, I was, uh, I was the treasurer of the American Society of Civil Engineers. But, but uh, going through that, I ended up meeting a lot of other people. And uh, so in my job, finished up at the Quaker Oats Company. I actually went to, well actually, uh, 
uh, to the company that was, was actually building the chemical plants. Uh, they were the ones that were uh, uh, selected to put the first ethanol plant in the state of Illinois. This was down in Pekin, Illinois. They were asked to convert a wet corn milling plant to a uh, to, with, they had a joint venture with Texaco to convert it to an ethanol plant, which is, I guess, uh, being used, I guess, for uh, quite a few years now. And uh, so it uh, turned out that uh, being with Quaker, it ended up like, well, then that job only lasted for a few years, but then it ended up that uh, after that job was over, uh, I ended up uh, applying for another job. It's, uh, which they were looking for a project manager, and I, I remember going into the office of, I guess it was actually the son of one of the original founders of the company was interviewing me, and he had uh, 232 applications. And, <coughs> and when I walked in, he says, he says, I know you, you got the job. <laughs> That's, that was it. So it was, uh, was a quite a uh, influence, or because it ended up, I never missed a paycheck from one after going to Quaker Oats. It was, uh, was from one job after another just by meeting a lot of these people from these different groups downtown. See, so so it was a good change, and uh, I think uh, the prayer of divine guidance helped me out. No, I guess he ended up staying there. Uh, the rest, I guess uh, he, well, I guess he had health problems, and I, well, I guess he was. I, another problem he had was when he came up to you. I guess he'd be shaking like that. I guess, but I guess, I guess he he had some other illnesses, and I guess he. No, he was quite good as an engineer, but I guess I guess he was probably brought up, uh, you know, uh, with some group that uh, maybe he was uh, didn't like uh, the Catholics. Anybody else? I think in all walks of life and work, there's some intimidation. Today they call it harassment. And <clears throat> if it isn't the owner of the company himself harassing you, you can file a complaint. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, oh, I guess, but that was one thing I. But that didn't want happened to years ago. <laughs> yeah, that was years ago, and then. Uh, uh, I guess he, you know, he was part of part of you know the upper management, and they usually have more influence. Man, so, today. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, I, I just can't help but think of the Sacred Heart. Now, I have a devotion to the Sacred Heart, and so we suffer at the hands of others, and we draw them to us. And I wonder if that man was drawn to you. Uh, you know, when he saw you were in the hospital and so forth, and then, then the fact that you left, you know? It's a but I, Christ. Actually, when I left uh, <coughs> the company, well, they, they uh, gave me like a going away card, and I guess he was the first one to sign it. <laughs> he was doing you a favor. Nah. <laughs> he was doing you a favor. Yeah. Yes, because he furthered your life. Better. Actually, yeah, because after that, <laughs> every, every place I went, you know, was. All because of connections. <laughs> so. Thanks so much.